Hi, and welcome back to another video for ASP.NET Web Application Development. In this video, we're going to start working with the Bootstrap CSS construction tool for your design. Now, if you are lacking time or artistic talent, then Bootstrap will make your life easy. It will make your site responsive and decide a lot of things for you. If you are a CSS expert or you are very artistic, then you probably will not like Bootstrap because it takes away all of your creativity. So, since I'm going to assume that a large number of you are new to CSS, then Bootstrap will probably be a good place to get started. So what is Bootstrap going to do for us? Well, it's a library that provides you with predefined styles, as mentioned here. And so we're going to figure out how to install it into our uh, Visual Studio project and uh, make it appear on the screen. I'm only going to show you a small part of what Bootstrap can do for you. But if you're interested in knowing more about it, there's, there's a great website that I probably don't even need to mention if you're into tutorials. W3Schools.com has Bootstrap 4 and everything you need to know about it. So if you're unfamiliar with Bootstrap, then that's a great spot to get some very quick uh, examples of how it works. What you probably need more help with is and how to run this uh, system called NuGet. So NuGet is a package manager. It's the part that goes out and finds libraries and dependencies, automatically downloads them, and includes them into your application. So if you're familiar with other languages, you will probably have heard of Maven for Java with Eclipse or Gradle if you're an Android Studio developer. NuGet is a package manager that is used for um, C Sharp and Visual Studio. So I'd like to point you to the official Microsoft web page on what is NuGet and what it does. So you can read through the information here and how to use it extensively for all of its features. But in the, in the following few minutes, I'm going to show you how to use it in the case of getting Bootstrap installed. All right, so let's return to the Visual Studio Development Kit, and I'm going to install Bootstrap using NuGet. So if I want to start NuGet, I right-click on the project title. In this case, it's Customers. And then I'm going to choose Manage NuGet um, Libraries. So the first thing we notice is that we have a list of packages that are already installed. You can tell because I'm on this tab called Installed. So I have jQuery and validation and other things for MVC. So there's a lot of pieces already in my application that were installed by default. I went to browse for some new ones. So I'm going to search for the word bootstrap and see what's in there. So I'm going to select bootstrap and you can see that the latest stable edition is 441. So I believe this will work. However, in a previous event, I had to choose an older version but we'll see how this goes. I'm going to choose 441 and install it. All right, it appears that the update was completed. Now let's see what happened to my project. I'm going to expand this folder called Scripts, and you can see that I have some new things in the Scripts area. I have Bootstrap Bundle, I have Bootstrap Everything, I have jQuery 3, and this famous thing called Popper. So, I might not know what any of this does, but I do know that they are now in my project. So the goal now is to figure out what we can do with some of these things in Bootstrap. So let's collapse the uh, items in the scripts area, and let's go look at the default layout. The first thing I want to do is I want to define a site-wide file called site.css. Up until now, I've been in inserting style tags in the, po in the top of different pages. It's not really the right way to do it. So let's create that file called site.css and then we'll move some of our styles into it. So in the content folder, I'm going to right click and choose insert a new style sheet. And I'm going to name it as site.css. So now I can put all of my styles in one place. You notice they provided me with the body tag. So I'm going to delete that for now, but we'll, we'll replace it with other things. Let's start with the default layout, and let's cut out all of the stuff here for the word footer. So I'm going to control X, and I'm going to move it over to the style sheet. So footer is now defined in this file. Also in the test area, 
I had some styles. So I'm going to cut out all of the styles that were here and move them into the site area as well. So now back to the test area, I should be able to delete the other items that were called style. I should go back to the default layout as well. I no longer need the style section here. So let's save both of those and run the program. So you can see, as I run the program, the styles remained exactly as they did before. However, now I have combined all of my styles into one file where they're easily managed. Next, I want to include the bootstrap style, and we'll see if that has a dramatic effect on our page as well. So I'm going to go to the root slash content again, and this time I'm typing in bootstrap dot. There are a lot of bootstrap styles. Now the two choices that you really have to pick from are bootstrap.css and then there's another one called bootstrap.min.css. Now why would I pick the min? Well the min part has all of the files reduced in size. So we can look at the actual styles for a second here. Let's go ahead and click on bootstrap CSS. I'm in the content folder and you can see that there are pages and pages of styles. So let's uh, just see what all of these things might be. They all look like they're aligning and coloring and doing things that we would do in CSS. So that's a normal looking file. Let's go look at the one that has the min option. So min is the exact same file, but it has all of the spaces and all of the hard returns taken out. So it's really not readable. However, there is a significant size in reduction. So the file size is smaller, even though it's not human readable. So for the interest of making this thing load faster, a smaller file size is better. Let's finish off the line here with the relative uh, equals style sheet and the type equals text slash CSS. Now right away we might notice a difference in our page. Let's run it again. So the page looks slightly different. You can see that the fonts are different. Some of the things that I had before, such as the custom colors and sizes, are still there, but everything is now in the Arial font. The margins are set to zero on the edge, and the footer looks slightly bigger. So the, uh, the, the fonts are being applied from our Bootstrap format. Now the next item I'm going to include is some JavaScript includes from Bootstrap as well. So the tag for this is script, and the source is coming from the scripts folder. The jQuery library has many options just like Bootstrap, and I'm going to select the jQuery library that has the min option in it to reduce file size. So we'll close off the script tag. Now Bootstrap has some custom written JavaScript, and so they have a library that we need to include called bootstrap.js, and once again, I will choose the min option. Now we're going to apply some formatting in the body. So I'm going to include a new div tag to begin the body and to end the body. So div, the body things, and then a closed div. So knowing a little bit of Bootstrap, I know that everything should be included in a box called a container. And that's, it's going to put some margins around the edge. And there's another tag called body content. Now how do I know that? Well, it's because I went through the tutorials on how to use Bootstrap. So you can use this just because I told you so but I encourage you to go look at the manual and then to go look at the examples that they have on Bootstrap's website. Let's see what it does when we run this. So now you can see what the container object did. We have an inch or so margin on the left and the right side. And also I did not include the footer as part of that container and so it includes the entire width. Now in the next video I'd like to add a menu across the top which is the, uh, the navigation bar. But the video is getting long, so we're going to stop here for now, but come back in just a minute, and we'll finish up with the nav bar.